Hi everyone. Firstly, I want to apologize to all of you for releasing this video after a long time. My name is Vishnu Dutt, and as promised in last video, let's discuss software defined access data plane in detail. SD access data plane is based on VXLAN encapsulation, and to understand VXLAN, let's compare it with legacy networking technologies. We will compare how to host inside a network or VLAN communicate with each other without VXLAN and with VXLAN. This comparison will give you the clear picture of SD access data plane. As you can see, we have divided the screen with two pictures, this one and this one. On this side or on left hand side, we will see how host A and host B inside a same VLAN 10 communicates with each other without using VXLAN. We will compare this scenario with VXLAN scenario on this side. Okay. First of all, let's understand this topology. Host A and B are part of VLAN 10 and connected to port 0 slash 1 of the access switch 1 and switch 3. All these links are trunk links. This one, this one, this one, all are trunk links. Okay. These switches are core switches and we have collapsed core design. Okay, guys. Yep. We are good. Host A initiates a ping towards host B. By looking at the IP addresses of these two hosts, you can easily figure out that both of them belong to the same subnet. Let's draw the packet. Source address of this packet will be 192.168.56.11 and the destination address of this packet will be 192.168.56.12. Host A needs to create layer 2 header also so that it can forward this packet over this interface. Right? Uh, this interface. So the source MAC address of this packet will be a colon a colon a right so here is the problem host a doesn't know the mac address of host b and cannot complete the packet i'm pretty sure that you guys know how host a is going to resolve mac address of b yes correct through address resolution protocol in other words we can say to send this data packet this one host a needs help of a control plane which is address resolution protocol in this case my last statement was very crucial in understanding vxlan okay host a will save this packet into its memory and initiates an r request packet which will help host a to resolve mac address of host b so how does an r packet look like let's draw it so our packet consists of sender MAC address, sender IP address, target MAC address, and target IP address. So it is shown here, okay? Hence, through address resolution pro, uh, uh, packet, host A is simply asking, what is the MAC address associated with IP address 192.168.56.12? To send this R request, also host A needs to create layer to frame, right? Hence, a L2 header is slapped with source address of A colon, A colon, A, and destination address of all Fs. All Fs represents a broadcast layer to address. Now, ARP broadcast packet is complete and host A can send it over this interface, this one. When switch one receive this art broadcast, it creates an entry into its scan table, and this entry will have VLAN number as 10, interface as 0 slash 1, and MAC address as A colon A colon A, which means host A is part of VLAN 10 and is reachable over interface 0 slash 1. Switch creates its scan table on the basis of source MAC address. This is a standard switching, correct? Switch one will forward this ARP broadcast on all interfaces except the one on which it was received. 
this is the one on which it was received so switch one will won't send this packet over this interface hence switch one will forward the arp request over this trunk interface only right it won't send this packet over this trunk interface anyone know why i leave this question to you guys if you get the answer please do comment in comment section below one thing to note here is that before forwarding this arp request over these trunk links switch will assign a dot one q tag on vlan 10 so that receiving switch will place this packet into vlan 10 right this statement is again very important in understanding vxlan later arp request will reach to switch 3 switch 3 will create a similar entry like this correct this means that host a is reachable over this interface right eventually the ARP request will reach to host B, which will check ARP content and come to know that ARP is destined to it. Hence, host B will generate a unicast ARP reply, which consists of MAC address corresponding to IP address 192.168.56.12. When switch 3 receives this ARP reply, it will create a similar entry like this. Uh, we created this entry before also, right? In its scam table and forwards it towards switch one switch one will again create a cam table entry which says host b is a part of vlan 10 and can be reached over this interface our reply will eventually be reaches to host a now host a can complete this ping packet this one and can send it out right this way hosts inside the same subnet can communicate with each other Guys, be with me. All of these basic concepts are really very important in understanding VXLAN technology. My firm belief is that if you have firm understanding of basics of networking, you can easily learn new concepts. Now, let's discuss how to host in a same subnet communicates in a VXLAN environment. To do this, let's understand the changes in right hand side topology. All these links, these one, are now layer 3 links this one is l3 this one is l3 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 right because these links are l3 the switch cannot put dot one q vlan information and also cannot forward our requests right another change in the topology is that i have created a loopbacks on all these switches for example loopback 10.0.0.1 slash 32 is present on switch 1 and 10.0.0.2 slash 32 is present on switch 3. All L3 interfaces are running OSPF routing protocol and we have advertised all these loopbacks in OSPF. Hence, switch 1 knows how to reach loopback of switch 3 and switch 3 knows how to reach loopback of uh, switch 1. Correct? It's a, it's a simple routing. So we are we are good so far let's begin host a initiates an icmp ping packet but it won't be able to complete the packet because it does not know the mac address of host b as explained previously also it will create a arp request broadcast packet and send it towards switch one here is the arp broadcast packet uh, this one this is same as we discussed before. Switch one will update its cam table just like before, right guys? Now the issue is host A cannot broadcast this ARP request, correct? So how this problem is going to be resolved? This is exactly where VXLAN encapsulation comes into picture. Switch one will take this ARP broadcast packet and slap a VXLAN header ahead of it. Let's draw this. So in this VXLAN header, it will also mention that this R broadcast belongs to VLAN 10, right? Just like just like a dot one Q header. This field in VXLAN header is also called VNI, which is virtual network identifier. To send this packet over these L3 interfaces, these one, 
this VXLAN packet is encapsulated in another IP packet so that it can be transported over these L3 links, right? Hence, we need to slap an IP header with source IP address of 10.0.0.1. So here we put another IP header with source IP of 10.0.0.1. Remember guys, 10.0.0.1 is the loopback present on switch 1, which is also used to identify switch 1. Now the problem is, what should be the destination address of this IP packet? Switch 1 doesn't know the destination IP address of this encapsulated packet, right? Although we can, although we know that the destination address should be 10.0.0.2 as host B is connected to switch 3. But how would switch 1 knows about this information? This is where control plane comes into picture. We need someone who can tell switch 1 the destination address of this packet and control plane exactly do this for switch 1. In SD access, location identity separation protocol or LISP is used as control plane which will guide switch 1 to fill the gaps. You guys need to understand that VXLAN is just an encapsulation technique and you need control plane to fill it. VXLAN RFC says that you could use any control plane mechanism and Cisco decided to use LISP in SD access because of several reasons which we can discuss later in coming videos. By now, I am pretty sure that you all understand the need of control plane. Yes, correct, to fill this address information this one so that VXLAN packet can be forwarded over these L3 interfaces. Let's complete and send this packet in next video. Hope you enjoy this video.